everyone, it's Dominic, the Primetime Treasure Hunter. Welcome back to another video. It's that time again. It's time to do another unboxing from that big storage unit that I wound up purchasing. And as you saw in my last video, what we did is consolidated everything from two pallets onto one pallet, plus I have some overflow under my workbench. So we're gonna grab two boxes here. We're gonna start with a box of comics and then a box of some of those Dungeons and Dragons and sci-fi fantasy books and see what else we could find. Hopefully there's some more uh, hidden treasures inside of here. So ready to go grab some, take a look. Mrs. Primetime is gonna help out. We've got uh, Daisy chilling out in her Easter outfit. So who knows what's gonna happen. Let's go take a look. Okay, so in terms of which to pick from, we're just gonna skim some off the top here. Uh, I have my eyes set on this one uh, with some books to go through. We're gonna do that second. Mrs. Primetime doesn't really like going through these. She prefers to go through the comic books. She feels she could help out more with that. So we're gonna go uh, with this box here. I see some G.I. Joe up top, so I like that. And this box is actually pretty deep. You know, it goes down a ways, it's pretty heavy. So uh, let's go through both of these and uh, hopefully find some good. Daisy, are you doing quality inspection already? I just brought that in. Daisy's got her Easter outfit on. There you go. She's a little Easter bunny today. I always wonder what she smells on there. There's got to be like the other person probably had a dog or something or a cat or something. She must smell some kind of animal there. Right, Daisy? All right. Let's get the Dungeons and Dragons and the other books. All right. So while Miss Primetime is going through the comic books, I'm actually going to start going through these books. This way we could multitask because it's already late. It's like almost 10 o'clock at night and I've got to be at work early tomorrow and i got a million other things to do. So we're going to try to get through these as efficiently as possible. So turn around this way, I guess. Be the easiest way to see what we have here. Uh, Vampire the Dark Ages. Don't know, but I've always said anything with a vampire in it is a good sign. So just flip through it. It's uh, again one of these role playing uh, type books. You know, I'm checking to see if there's any writing in it or, you know, any obvious water damage or anything like that. Daisy, will you stop? <laughs> no, don't claw it. Don't claw the book. Don't claw the book. I will have to check the age later, but I'm guessing it's like from the 90s or something like that. Spine is intact. Good. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that's not the year, 2800. Nope, unless we go on a time machine. So, okay, let's put this one over here. Uh, let's see what we got here. Oh, this looks good. Nice, big, thick, heavy role-playing game book. I don't know the series, but uh, let's see, White Wolf. Let's check out, again, skim through it. Make sure everything's okay inside. It is. Gonna deal with Daisy, though. Jumping up on me. You know, if you are doing this with animals around, you want to make sure they don't damage the book. So, uh, let me see if I could just put it over here. Maybe that would be daisy proof. You just told me that this book over here is from 2001. And this one over here is from 1998. So, they're not that vintage, huh? All right. All right. So, before we get back to the books, Mrs. Primetime just handed a stack of these over to me. Uh, I've talked about this before, but especially for those who are new and trying to get into comic books, uh, Vampirella is one that I look for often and always pick it up. I put it into little bundles. You'll see there's different titles, like this one is Vampirella Classic, and so we've got a few uh, issues of that here. Um, I really like the art on this one. It's really cool, uh, her laying with the tiger. Uh, then let's see some more Vampirella classics. Uh, Vampirella came out in 1969. I've actually had the number one issue before. If you get it certified, it came out from a company named Warren. Uh, if it's certified in like very fine condition, which is pretty decent uh, and graded, that book could sell for well over a thousand dollars. Now none of these are like that. Uh, these are more modern Vampirella books, but uh, still, if you get a stack like this, I guarantee you that they're gonna sell. So, you know, people have been, uh, that's a Mrs. Primetime sneeze, folks. That is the first time you've ever actually heard Mrs. Primetime. <laughs> She's looking at me like she wants to kill me. <laughs> anyway, so uh, this, this is, um, you know, this again, I've talked about this before. This is a very hard part of my job going through all of these uh, 
you know, Vampirella comic books and stuff like that. You know, it's um, you know, it's painstaking work, but someone has to do it. And um, you see, we've got like a pinup special right here. These actually, they don't have to be put in the adult section of eBay. Uh, you could just put these in the regular section. It should be fine. It's a common book to find in the regular section of eBay. But you can see here, there's a lot of the Vengeance of Vampirella. So we've got a stack of those. Uh, so that's good. So anyway, nice stack of those. Uh, another one um, that I've got over here, you've seen me uh, talk about this before. We just seem to keep finding these uh, randomly added into these collections. Now, as you can see, for obvious reasons, uh, this book actually, to be safe, if you ever find these Tarot, which of the Black Roses books, and Mrs. Primetime just hit me up with another Vampirella book, um, you should put these in the adult section. eBay really flags these types of things as nudity, even though it technically isn't. And you could get a listing like this pulled down. And I actually had one like this pulled down. And so now I have all my Tarot, which of the Black Roses on, uh, on the adult section of eBay, just so I don't deal with any uh, problems like that like here's another one uh, here and you know see you could see here what Jim Bowden's doing He's very creative artistically but uh, causes all sorts of problems now you'll see a lot of these that are listed on the regular section of, of eBay the non-adult section and you could get away with it but if eBay you know tells you you know pull it down they'll give you a warning don't put it back up because then if you look like you're flaunting their rules a second time that's when you really could get in trouble so don't do that Okay, uh, we've got another stack over here. Now, this is a good example of something that's really not worth that much. Uh, the company that made this, this is the symbol for Image, uh, Image Comic Books. It's a popular, um, you know, third party, what we call independent comic book because it's not Marvel, it's not DC. They do produce a lot of popular titles that can be worth something like Walking Dead comic books and stuff like that. But uh, this title just isn't that popular. Uh, it will sell, but only for about a buck a piece. So there's normally a stack of 25 here, and I've got zero to 20, uh, eh, zero to 25, and it's missing uh, two issues so far. But there could be more over there in the stack. But so the 25 will generally go for about 25 bucks, and that doesn't include the shipping and stuff. So you're really not going to make out a ton on these. You can sell them, but this is what we would consider bulk. You know, it's just not, you know, just not worth that much. All right, well, let's get back to this box, see if we could uh, figure out what else is in here. Bloodlines, The Hidden, no idea. Let's see what else we got here. Secret Societies, looks a little bit older. Source, now this is interesting. You know, anything occult related does tend to sell well. So source book of occult uh, organizations. All right, that's interesting. Uh, now, you know, the older this is, the more it'll be worth. Kind of feels like a 90s book. Let's see here. Yep, yeah, there we go. 1995. I'm telling you, you could go through, when you go through enough of these books, you could kind of just tell uh, by feeling it if it's a 90s, a 70s, an 80s. It's just something you develop in terms of a little skill. Uh, okay, we've got like a Wizards um, magazine. This company, Rollades, made a bunch of these Wizards uh uh, books and so they don't go for that much individually. So you have to lot them together maybe to move them. Let's see what we've got here. Uh, let's see. Loom of Fate, a tale of destiny for Mage the Ascension. So this is some type of probably supplement for a game. And um, you never know, you could have someone looking for it. And um, you know, it's 90s though. In general, still 90s are not gonna sell as well as the 80s books. Uh, this is interesting. Chan Book Bali. Um, vampire though. So you know, again, feels like a 90s book. Let's see if I'm right. Yep, we are. Later in the 90s, generally, the worse it's gonna be in terms of value. I'm gonna start pulling from back here because it's tipping forwards. Uh, this is better. Um, it's Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Forgotten Realms book. You know, I'm doing very well with these, so I just put these to the side and they're just easy flips. So, all right, let's just uh, move this one over here. So let's see here, we've got more. You know, anything that says Dungeons and Dragons on it, the Forgotten Realms part is worth less than if it doesn't say that on it for the most part. But this one's actually in pretty decent shape. 
Um, oh, good. Miss Primetime just found something because I was looking for this. I was just uh, telling her we're looking for this issue here, uh, Vampirella of Dracula number five, because uh, this now completes the set. So I have the set. And so this, uh, you know, series of five could go for you know, 15, 20 bucks for that. So now we've got a complete set of Vampirella. So that's good. All right, let's move over here. Uh, this book is bent a little bit, but it is a Dungeons and Dragons book. Uh, overall, it's in pretty decent shape besides this little bend to it. Um, let's see what year this one comes from. Probably, again, a 90s book, but it will have more value because it says Dungeons & Dragons on it compared to some of these other things. So let's see if we could figure out the age of it. Uh, yeah, it's actually in the 2000s, as you can see. So, but it's a first printing, so that's good. But the Dungeons & Dragons logo on it, that helps save it. All right, let's see what else we got. Uh, more Dungeons & Dragons. Now this one feels a little bit older. This one, it's probably still in the 90s, but maybe it's 80s, maybe it pushes it, let's see. Uh, yo, look at that, see, right on the border. Like I felt it was right on the border, it turns out it was. Uh, again, it's just kind of like a skill you develop. So uh, this one here really kind of looks like an 80s book. Let's see. I mean, this is kind of interesting. Oriental Adventure. Uh, all right. Let's see. Where are we here? Age, age, age. There we go. Yep. 1987. So it just has a feel to it. It's uh, It has a certain look to it. You know, it just just does. Um, now, Dungeon Master's book, and I have some, if you remember from prior videos, I have some of these like flaps that are missing books inside. So I've just got to match them up. So these probably, this probably goes to one that, you know, just has a cover outside and I'm looking for it. So I'll just put this in a special section where I'm uh, trying to fit these blank ones with ones that just have a cover and nothing else. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons, Hollow World Adventure Book. Uh, you know, I've said, if, if anyone's watching this and you're into Dungeons & Dragons and you see something, let's see, 1990, uh, you see something that you like, let me know, and um, we could work on uh, making a deal for it. You could contact me at primetimetreasure, no S, at gmail.com. Another Dungeons & Dragons Hollow World Player's Guide. I've never seen this one before. Uh, hoping it's 80s, may straddle it, and sure enough it does. Straddles it at 1990. So, very interesting. You know, I could also, I have another skill. I could also tell how old these are by sniffing the inside of the book. <laughs> you could actually develop that skill. I do not see a date here anywhere. Or sometimes you have to flip to the back of the book, like on the bottom. And there you go, 1993. So it's weird. You know, you expect it to be inside, but it's not always there. All right, let's take a look at this. Uh, this is good. These Ravenloft Dracula ones uh, sell really well. So uh, this is good to have. Uh, anytime you see that, Ravenloft, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, Dracula, pick that up. That's a good one. Uh, this feels interesting. Uh, looks interesting in terms of this art. Uh, looks very 80s to me. Let's see. Uh, indeed, Mutants of the Yucatan by Paladin Books. Uh, let's see, uh, it's got damage on it. Uh, it's got some staining inside, so that's gonna affect the value, but let's see what year we have here. Uh, 1990, kind of straddles it a bit, so. Um, uh, let's see, look this one up. Yeah, folks, I looked this one up and you know, it would only be worth something really if it was in like mint condition. So it's a good thing I have a garage sale coming up. I'm not even gonna bother listing this on eBay. Now I'm not gonna throw it out, but I'm just gonna toss it uh, in a garage sale and just try to get a few bucks out of it. So make a little garage sale pile. Uh, this is another one I happened to just grab from the box before. Uh, anything that says um, Robotech 2, you might want to write that down. Anything with Robotech, uh, pick that up. Those tend to have some value. Now, this has a few stains inside of it, uh, as you can see. But uh, in this current state, it's going to go into the garage sale. 
All right, we've got some loose stuff here. Let's take this out. Uh, okay, well, that character right there is Doctor Strange, I could tell you that. So this is one of these Marvel role-playing games. I love finding these. These are good. People will even buy these without the cover. And this is definitely one that's like that. Uh, this one here should be a 1980s one. And yep, there it is right there, 1986. So hopefully I can find a cover for this and make it even more valuable. But uh, we'll add it to our little coverless stack over there. And I think there's another one here or something. I don't know what the heck this is. Um, oh, this is just something that the... The guy who lost this storage unit, I think, just wrote up himself. And he just was writing up like his own little fantasy stories and stuff. But obviously, you can't do anything with that. So, all right. Um, move over here. There's something else that's thin. Uh, oh, good. An Indiana Jones book. Now, a little lesson for you. When you're going through these, um, through these lots, uh, let's see. What age is this here? This is 19... Ooh, good. 1985. This is nice. Look at the condition on this one. I'm going to look this one up. I have a bunch of other Indiana Jones books out there that I found through this uh, collection, and I haven't sold them all yet because I'm thinking of uh, possibly lotting them together depending on which other ones I find. But let me look this up. All right, everyone, this is a great example of why you need to use TerraPeak for comp research because if you look on eBay for this book, you will not find it being sold currently by anyone. And you will see that someone did try to sell this exact book uh, in the last 60 days for $45 and it didn't sell. So at that point, you don't know what's going on. Is this something that nobody's going to purchase or was it just uh, priced too high? Now, most likely it's priced too high at 45, given that it's Indiana Jones and from the 80s, it should sell. But to find proof of that, you really do need to go through TerraPeak. It's free if you have an eBay store, and that will go back to the last year of listings, not just the last 60 days. I just did that and found that this book sold for $27. So that tells me I could safely price this at $29.99, you know, and uh, should be able to sell it. All right, I thought that was the best one we found so far, but uh, let's see what else we've got here. Mount Nimro, Kingdom of Giants. This guy rules. Look at this guy. He's awesome. That's kind of what I look like when I hang out in my uh, my chair and I do my listings. <laughs> it's fine. Tom shaking her head. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Right? Right, Miss Primetime? <laughs> oh, wow. That is cool. That is cool. Now, I don't know what the value on this is, but that is an amazing cover. That is just so cool. Wow, I'm gonna look that one up now. Just It just looks so cool, I gotta look that up. Okay, so my instinct was right on this one. This is a good one. This is uh, actually has some value to it, even though it is um, not from too long ago. Uh, this one is uh, from 2007, and it's the first printing, which is good. But uh, this one is uh, pretty sought after. Uh, there just weren't that many of them made. That's the thing. And uh, again, the coolness of the cover definitely helps with selling it. Uh, has also a cool name there. Uh, it's D&D. &D. So this one uh, sold for as high as 28. Currently, the cheapest one available on eBay is 36. So I could safely price this at 29.99, uh, blow away the competition, and easily make the sale. So. That's what you could do when you buy these bulk lots like this. You get your money back real fast. No one else could compete with you. It's uh, That's just how you do it. Let's see what this is. Uh, is this something that, oh, let's see. Uh, oh, D&D &D again, Pyramid of Shadows. Again, uh, now this is good uh, to teach because it doesn't exactly say Dungeons and Dragons, but that's the actual logo. So if you're out there in the field, you see D&D &D like that, pick that up it's got the little dragon as the uh, ampersand right there so uh, that's uh, something good here let's see what this is another one here uh, let's see oh we got a Dominic right there we got a Dominic who wrote one of these books and it's probably not worth anything but uh, uh, anyway it's cool to see that I don't know we'll have to just look it up later all right let's see what we got next um, Werewolf Player's Guide. Uh, Werewolf uh, can do well, uh, but they made a million of these player's guides, and so uh, $10, you know, 
I'm gonna have to look around and see if I have any other werewolf books to lot this together with to make some more value out of it. So we'll just hold this one to the side and see what happens with it. Got a few more to go through in here. Uh, we've got, a, oh, this is good. Got a nice hardcover Dungeons and Dragons book. Those always go well. So um, in good shape inside. Nice, got a little piece of mail we'll just get out of there. And um, nice bright colors, no writing. Very good. Gonna check the comp out on this one. Yeah, folks, if you see Dungeons and Dragons hardcover books, I'm telling you, you gotta pick them up. Uh, it's just like printing money off of trees. It's just, uh, you know, this one here, this is, uh, and this is based on completed sales. This should easily go for around $60. Because uh, right now the cheapest you could find it is 68 and it did sell for around 60 So I could even start the pricing on this one at $64.99 and get pretty close to it. You know, I'm, you know, I'm always willing to negotiate a little bit on these things, but uh, you know, I'm not too far off of that. So that is a really good one though. That now is, I'd say, the best one out of the whole, uh, out of the whole pile. We've got two more to go though, so let's see what else we got in here. Um, I love mystery books. Mystery books with no cover on it. What is it? Usually look on the side and find out, but we don't have anything here. Hmm. Interesting. So, I have to open it up to take a look. And it's a mystery notebook. <laughs> it's nothing. See, I was hoping that this was like some amazing find and all it is, is blank paper. Oh well. Wow, wow. Oh, this is not, oh my gosh, this is cool. This is cool. This is guaranteed 1980s. And this is really amazing. I love this art. I have never, I'm telling you, this gotta be worth something. Uh, and a cool title, In the Dungeons of the Slave Lords, with all of these crazy looking characters on it. Oh my gosh, 1981, all right, gotta look this up. Well, I thought it'd be worth a lot more than it really is. Uh, max, it's like a $30 book, but uh, that would be if it was in like mint condition, which obviously this is not. So you got a pretty much half the value on this. I'm really surprised, I mean, I just thought for all those reasons, They'll be worth more, but that's why you got to check the comps, folks. I mean, you know, you go by instinct and sometimes be right, but other times, uh, you know, it's just off. But, um, you know, it'll definitely sell, but uh, just not for as much as I was hoping for. Oh, well. And the last thing here is a dungeon magazine. These don't go for much uh, unless you lot them together. And so I have some more outside and uh, I'm just going to lot them together and hopefully sell them. By the way, I looked these up from before, and it uh, turns out these are worth about 20 bucks a pop max. So, you know, we'll see. Just got to check it out with the current competition, but not bad. Get something out of these. All right, folks. Well, uh, Mrs. Primetime and Daisy went up to bed, so you'll notice it's a little quieter now. Uh, in fact, uh, Miss Primetime did a great job. She sorted all of these comic books in alphabetical order, so it's just a huge help. Uh, so nothing in there that's terribly valuable. Uh, this is just something, a uh, character you should know about, Electra. She is Daredevil's, uh, and that's Daredevil that you see over there. Um, you know, kind of plays a role of a girlfriend and an enemy sometimes. She's kind of like a frenemy. Uh, this book, in mint condition, would go for around 25 bucks, so... Uh, just so you know, you're aware to look out for anything with Electra on it. Uh, those tend to do well. In terms of the rest of these books, you know, there's things in here that range from, you know, just not going to do much uh, in and of itself. And so I've got to just kind of figure out how to creatively bundle them and flip it. This is this warrior nun, Ariella, not Ariola. Aaron, if you're watching, but Ariella. So, uh, you know, don't report me. <laughs> it just says Ariella. So, uh, yeah, Warrior Nun Ariella, I will uh, lock those together with other similar books. You know, the X-Men comic books, uh, just depends on which ones you have. You can see here it says Variant Edition. You know, a lot of times they are worth something, but sometimes they're not. It just depends on who did the variant cover. So, you know, with a lot of these newer books, what you have to do is you just have to lock them together. So you have to have a lot of Astonishing X-Men, and if you don't have that... 
Then you've got to put it together with a bunch of different X-Men titles, which I'll show you a bit later. But, um, you know, like Aquaman. Aquaman's, uh, you know, a little more popular now because the movie came out. You know, while this particular issue right here might not sell for much, if you could combine it with other Aquaman titles and make like a big lot of 20, 25 Aquaman books, well, then you're going to have something. So, uh, yes, I see that it says Prime. Too bad it doesn't say Prime Time. But, um you know, so in terms of just flipping through here, these are these brigade books that I showed you before. We never did find those missing issues here, but maybe they're in a different box. Um, so, you know, just like one random Batman detective comic book, which I have a ton of those in other boxes, so I'll just combine it with that. You know, here's just like a regular Batman series. Captain Marvel's more popular now because the movie that just came out uh, there's some Catwoman books here as well. Love Catwoman. So, uh, but it's just like one random. Or maybe there's a second one. Yeah, there's like two of them here. So, you know, just got to pull them. I know we found Catwoman in other boxes. So the job later on is going to be to basically synthesize all of these different boxes. But, you know, this is what happens with comic books. Uh, sometimes when you buy these big lots, you're going to come across, um, you know, books here that just aren't worth much individually. Like these Daredevil ones, individually, not worth much, but you can combine them together and make a nice little lot of Daredevil books. And that's basically what you have to do. For the random ones that just, you know, you just can't move or you can't sell, um, you know, I would suggest just putting them in a garage sale or, you know, putting them in like a big giant box like this, like one of these big long boxes, and just trying to see if you could sell it to a comic shop for like 20 bucks or something like that. And you could justify doing that if you've already made, you know, Mrs. Primetime just made a little innocent mistake there by putting this one here. So, um, cause there was a d detective one back here somewhere. Yep, here it is over here. So just pull this one out and just move this one right over here. Uh, let's make sure we've got a numerical order. Yep, there we go. So, um, yeah, you could justify doing that in terms of, uh, if you just want to get rid of a bunch of, you know, books that, you know, just don't hold much value anymore after you've made all your money back with the more expensive book. So, like I said, I'm already in profit with this whole storage unit. So, you know, I could justify doing something like that and just feel like, all right, well, I just got rid of these books and got 20 bucks for them. So, you know, that's what you have to do sometimes. So don't sweat it too much once you've got your money back. That's the key. You just can't buy an entire box of worthless books. You know, that's where you're going to have uh, a problem. So you have to be able to know that there's something in there that could help you make your money back. Like if I just found, you know, a box with all this, I would never buy it. So I had to know that there was stuff in that collection, you know, that would help me out. But, you know, right here, we're just not seeing much. This is part of dealing with comic books. Um, you know, so... For many reasons, you want to make sure you know your key titles, you want to know your key characters. So just flipping through here, we've got some Moon Knight, we've got some Ms. Marvel. Um, you know, that's good. It's good to see Ms. Marvel because of the movie. Uh, you know, that's all a little better because of that. Uh, but again, you got to combine them together into these lots. I keep saying that over and over, but that's how you've got to move these things. Uh, there's just not much I could tell you about these folks because these books, again, there's just not a lot of value in these things. Now, you know, the key thing about this um, this collection, here's some other X-Men books I was telling you about. So you could take those astonishing X-Men books from earlier and you could even combine them with like issues like this and someone will buy a lot of 20, 25 X-Men books or something like that. Uh, just moving forward just a little bit more. Official handbook of the Marvel Universe. Uh, there's a couple of these. These are cool. They're like little encyclopedias about you know, Marvel. Uh, the Punisher. Uh, again, individually, not going to sell for much. So let's see what else we got here. I'm just skimming through here. We've got some Silver Surfer. That is my favorite comic book character for those who are wondering right here. I love this guy. I just personally love how he could explore all of outer space. Outer space has always fascinated me. And so because he could go explore it on a surfboard, that's really cool. So love him. Love that whole series. Uh, let's see here. Um, Submariner. Submariner. 
Suicide Squad is good. Thor. This is a bunch of Thors. The best thing in this box is really these um, the Vampirella books back here. That's definitely a highlight for me. So I'll definitely, um, and I'll do well on those. But these other books here, eh, again, just not, not much value at all. Wolverine, bunch of Wolverines. Some Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman's always good. Huge collector base for Wonder Woman. So I'm going to have to just get those other boxes out and uh, do some combos to get some value out of the ones in here. All right, everyone. Well, that's going to wrap it up for tonight. Uh, I know it wasn't the most exciting unboxing ever, but the way I see it is that as long as you could pick up a tip or two, you know, maybe a book title or two, or just something that could help you when you're going out there sourcing, then this could have been worthwhile for you. So hopefully you took a few notes. Hopefully there's some things that got into that photographic memory. And uh, when you go out sourcing, hopefully again, this helps you find some treasures. So there were some good things in there. It wasn't like every single thing was like a smashing success and a huge treasure, but that's just the reality of what happens sometimes when you go out and you buy these large collections. There's gonna be things in there that are of great value and there's gonna be things in there that are of very little value. So uh, I tried to kind of talk you through that and uh, help you kind of see some of the things that uh, are more valuable and then, you know, how to try to combine things together into lots to, uh, you know, to try to get some more value out of it. So uh, I've got to wrap things up here because I've got a lot to do and not much time to do it in. So I uh, hope you liked the video. If so, make sure you hit the like button. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Definitely make sure you come to the Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. The link is down below. We just started a formal mentorship program tonight. Uh, so you could come by and get matched up with a mentor who could help you in reselling. So that's exciting uh, as well. So uh, the Instagram account, I just put up a, a new video there today, a little tip video about uh, reselling and displaying things. It's not available on my YouTube channel. So that's at prime underscore time underscore treasure. I'll see everyone back at the next video, everyone. Take care.